Hello and welcome to the TMZ Podcast. I'm Charlie Cotton. I'm Charlie Nav. And you should stop this episode right now and oh. go and listen to <gasps> our interview with the voice of Siri. This was an amazing interview. We talked to her about Scarlett Johansson, how she's kind of been in a war with OpenAI over them using a voice that sounds very similar to hers. Yeah, we talked to her about all types of things about being the most famous voice in the world that's completely unrecognizable in real life. <laughs> right. Like no one's recognized her. And I think it's just so interesting, like the fact that Siri is an actual person rather than like an automated, generated voice. And Newsflash, Siri yeah. doesn't even like or use Siri. <laughs> she does, the, the lady who doesn't Or use, Alexa. Or Alexa. She doesn't <laughs> like the technology. So it was a very interesting uh, chat. Go and listen to that. It's it's on our podcast network right now. Yep. But on to the news today, because yes. Cassie has broken her silence on Diddy's brutal beating of her. Um, she says that she'll never fully recover, which is understandable. Right. Very sad. We'll also talk about Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck, of course, because they've got different responses to the media prying about their private life. Jennifer mm -hmm. Lopez is like, uh-uh-uh, Ben Affleck's playing along and having fun. Uh, kind of hiding now, it, hiding a little bit. The new photos. We'll talk about Antonio Brown, because this guy who's like wearing bling everywhere, private. Living a lavish lifestyle. Private jets and fancy dinners and stuff. Well, He's bankrupt. Yeah. He just filed for bankruptcy. Kind of checks out, honestly. It does. And finally, in our almost new segment. <laughs> oh, no. We'll talk about Naked and Afraid. Oh, I can't I can't even hear this. Because some, so, oh! some guy got a tick on his... Wee-wee? Dick. <laughs> God. You call it a wee-wee? You don't I even mean, have a kid. I feel... <laughs> You call it a wee wee. I Charlie. feel like you could say like fifty different names. Yeah, or your they member. did. They did actually on this episode of Naked and Afraid. It's quite funny. Oh, but to begin with, Cassie is opening up about the video we all saw of Diddy beating her in a hotel lobby. Yep. Um, it's so sad, you know what she has had to go through, and now the trauma is just like bubbling to the surface again. Yeah, so she posted on Instagram. She said, thank you for all the love and support from my family, friends, strangers, and those I have yet to meet. The outpouring of love has created a place for my younger self to settle and feel safe now. But this is only the beginning. Domestic violence is the issue. It broke me down to someone I never thought I would become. And then she, she also talked about uh, the victims and said how hard it is to come forward and that, you know, we should be open-minded to listening to people's stories. Right. And, you know, this is on the heels of, you know, Diddy's apology and everything. But before that, he had claimed that the allegations... He had done no wrongdoing. These exact allegations about this hotel beatdown, he denied categorically, said it was like a money grab, you know, and now... So... This guy's just like circling the drain at this point. Yeah, I mean, there was that other woman, that that model that had filed another sexual assault lawsuit against him. I mean, these are all just stacking up at this point. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, we had mentioned yesterday, 50 Cent has a documentary coming out about Diddy that just landed on Netflix or with Netflix hasn't come out yet. Um, so it is just piling up and piling up on him. And we haven't really seen him out like, being his usual self, like at dinners, parties, like we've just seen him, like photos of him in Miami, kind of just walking around his little neighborhood and, and laying low. I wonder what the public perception of him would be if he did take a stroll through Miami, because when the allegations first surfaced without this video evidence, he was strolling around Miami and he was everyone's best friend. Everyone was screaming and excited. He was kind of like the king of Miami for right. the longest time. But now that the video surfaced and we have proof of, of some of the things he's done. There's, there's more alleged, but we've got proof that some of the things were true. I wonder if he took that same stroll, if the public would embrace him or tell him to, you know, go back to his mansion and sit and think about what he did. It's a good point. But I do think him laying low is very much intentional. Like, even though the photos we've seen of him in his neighborhood, he like looks happy. I think he's trying to lay low because he he's missing big 
family events. Um, I don't know if you saw his twins. They had their prom over the weekend here, I believe, in L.A., and he wasn't there for that. And I feel like if these allegations didn't come out, he would have been there for that. So he's missing out on on big moments with his with his family. It must be hard being those twins and yeah. um, women, obviously, and like what their dad's accused of. And I don't know, they've probably seen the video before by now. Maybe they avert their eyes. But to be young women and your dad has provably done horrible things to women, yeah. it's a difficult position for someone just graduating high school to be in. Right. And they don't have their mom either. Remember, their their mom had passed away. So all they really have is their dad, well, and each other and their siblings. But yeah, it's got to be very difficult. And another famous person is, is in the comment section of Diddy, Diddy's apology video. Well, a daughter of one, at least, Shaka Khan's daughter, called out Diddy for disrespecting her mum. Yeah, this was out of nowhere. I don't think anyone has ever put, like, Shaka Khan and Diddy in the same sentence. No. But, uh, yeah, Shaka Khan's daughter, Indira, posted a comment basically slamming him, saying, I'm glad this happened to you. You got in my mother's face and publicly disrespected her, yelling and screaming like a lunatic when my little brother tried to get tried to get you out of my mother's face, your security jumped my 19-year-old brother. So it seems like it happened a long time ago, but I'm sorry, what? We need like more information about this. Well, and, and I mean, just, we might get it now. We, we have reached out uh, to try to get more information, so stay tuned on TMZ.com because we may have updates at some point. But yeah, what happened? I mean, Shaka Khan, she is so beloved. Mm. How do you scream at her, allegedly, right? Right, right. I wonder if we'll ever hear from J-Lo, because J-Lo was obviously with Diddy for a long time. Right. And, and I did... saw that's like a big theory as to why her and Ben aren't doing well, because all this um, Diddy stuff has surfaced and she somehow feels like in the loop. Look, we, we have not confirmed anything about that specifically, but I did see it's kind of like a big theory online. Right. Speaking of J-Lo. J-Lo was in Mexico City. For, Love Mexico City. You do? It's the best. Uh, <laughs> Mexico City's actually, this is a bit of a tangent, but oh, Mexico okay. City's actually where that taco stand just got their Michelin star. No way. A taco, like a random taco stand selling $5, $3 tacos. Well, I mean, they have some of the best food there. There's a restaurant called Pujol that's like, I mean, it's like a Nobu. Like it is fancy. It's There's fancy stuff there. But anyway. Taco stand? Okay. <laughs> anyway, Jennifer Lopez is in Mexico City and she was talking about her film Atlas uh, and a reporter asked her about her and Ben. Here's what she had to say. Ooh. <laughs> okay, we're not doing that. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You know better than that. Come on. Don't come in here with that energy, please. Thank you so much. See me Ooh. stepping in to save the day. That reporter got roasted. And then her, co yeah, her, so the the star of the movie, Simu Lee, is like, just chill. You know what I mean? Just yeah. calm down. I I don't like that he chimed in. I mean, I get what he's doing. He's trying to protect his like co-star, mm. but it's just like, here's the thing: she's been to so many different junkets, and she did. She's done like full on red carpet interviews. Not one person has asked about what's going on with her and Ben. That is the elephant in the room. Yes. And look, when you're on the red carpet, usually the rep of that celebrity will tell you, don't ask about this. Right. And they'll only allow you to do an interview with that celebrity if, as long as you agree to the terms. So presumably, no one is asking about it because people around her are telling reporters, don't ask about this, right. even though this is what everyone wants to know. So I got to say kudos to this reporter for possibly going against the grain and still asking about it because the only reason why we're talking about Atlas right now is her movie is because this reporter asked about Ben and J-Lo. That's, that's very true. It, it is good for Atlas, I suppose. But also yeah. when you're a reporter and there's agreed upon terms, like when I'm out, at LAX. About Does that happen to you too? Do they tell you, often, like, don't ask me about this? Often. If I know there's a sort of a really negative story about them that they won't want to talk about, yeah. but I, but there's also a, like a fun story that I would love to talk to them about, Yeah. off camera to begin with, I say, hey, I really want to get you on this. I'm not going to ask about that. Can I please have, you know, two minutes of your time? Because otherwise they'd just say no, because they'd be worried that I was going to ask about the bad thing. 
So sometimes it's a bit of a negotiation where if you want your clip, your soundbite, mm -hmm. you've got to play on their terms. And in this instance, I think the reporter sort of like wanted to be a bit devious and get around the prescribed terms. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, Jennifer Lopez was not happy about it. Oh, no, not at all. And look, I get at the same time, like celebrities do have a right to their personal life and their privacy and not having to re reveal that. But I mean... It, it's so hard to ignore that when everybody is talking about like them living in separate homes and he's wearing his ring one day and he's not the next day. Like she could have at least been like, you know, I just don't want to talk about that right now. But instead it was like, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know. <laughs> we'll never know if Ben is wearing his ring today because right. on the other hand, Ben is playing with the paparazzi. He's joking with them. He, he came out in almost like a sling type covering his whole arm his left arm where you'd have the ring finger. Was it a sling? I thought it was like a big jacket. It was a jacket type. He was holding okay. his arm up like this. Yeah, I was he, just was saying, his, he was hiding his He was hiding it. Finger. He was hiding it and laughing like clowning the paps while his son Sam was papping the paps. Yeah. Like he had a big <laughs> yeah. camera out taking So there's one way to play it which is humorless JLO mm -hmm. and there's one way to do it with his, which is with humor like yeah. Ben does. I like the Ben idea. I like Ben. I like Ben. I mean it's just I, I like J-Lo, too. She, for sure, has some hits, and she's obviously an icon. But I don't know. I just don't feel like they mix. I don't feel like they mix. It wasn't going to work. But I, I think everyone loved the love story, and to see the love story just fall apart at the seams is, is sad. Okay, on to our next story. Antonio Brown is filing for bankruptcy. He owes nearly $3 million to eight creditors. Woo! Which is crazy because he earned $80 million during his 12-year NFL career. And now he claims to have less than $50,000 in assets. So he does Less than $50,000 in assets? Yes. Does he not own a home? I guess. I, I That's thought he like owned- one car. I thought he owned this mansion. He owned this $7 million Florida mansion. He owned, apparently had a $4 million car collection. So I don't know- how you claim $50,000 and maybe you pretend that they're part of a different business venture that isn't you, or I don't know how you this hide is these things. very strange. It's, it's very strange. Also, he went out to Craig's last night, <laughs> the place no. to be seen. The, the like, most like expensive, well, it's not like super expensive, but I mean, LA expensive. You know yeah. paparazzi are going to be there. He was wearing a big diamond chain, presumably costs more than $50,000, right. but this chain he's wearing. See, I mean... I, I, I can't have any debt. It just stresses me out. Right. <laughs> so to think like he owes like $3 million. I mean, how do you go out and like you're not sweating? Like what if they start showing up? I'm sure they have like showing up at his door, yeah. knocking, give me my money. Like what's that movie with Adam Sandler where it, Unhidden Gems? Or Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that stressed me out. Right, right. I uncut just don't gems. know how you get. Yeah, Uncut Gems. I don't know how you get to this point where you're like, continuing to live like a lavish life, like Kim, Kim Zolzia, yes, right? Exactly. And Kim, or what's her husband? Roy Bierman. Roy Bierman. Oh my gosh. Like how do people continue to like keep up with the Joneses when they don't have the money? I feel sorry because on this filing, he has a debt to a local plumber of less than $300. Just pay the guy. Oh, poor plumber. <laughs> and all the things he, the plumber had to do and I see know. Oh, and gross. to do it for, no, for nothing. nothing. Oh, he came in. Oh, I don't know what. <laughs> what? Like, poor guy. Shit through his poop and, oh, and he nothing. Not... Shout out to that plumber. Yeah, shout out to the local plumber. All right, almost news time. This time we're covering a naked and afraid segment where this unfortunate contestant, Sam Mouser, Mauser, whatever his name is, mm -hmm. he's got a curse because he was on last season of Naked and Afraid and he got a burnt penis. He sat too close to the fire. And this time on Naked and Afraid, a tick oh. burrowed into oh. his penis. <laughs> oh, I, I can't. It's making my skin crawl. Let's listen to it now. Oh. Oh, no. I've got a tick. Do you really? Yes. What? Ah. Uh, mmm. It's not even the biggest target. Oh, wow, dude, oh. bro. Are you, are you going through any pain or you just yes, know it's, it's pretty it's pretty excruciating it's pretty i tried to, like in my in a moment of panic i tried to pull him out and he's tried to bury himself oh. in further okay well that is pretty shocking I, stuff i am about to throw up right now when you go on naked and afraid and you're in the colombian badlands like yeah. you, that's the sort of stuff you got to expect right totally yeah you expect a tick but on 
your private part. Why mm. is this not making you squirm at all? I You're mean, the one that has the goods, presumably. Like, oh, I got the goods, all right. <laughs> oh no, I got the goods. Oh. But yeah, I mean, it's just because it's also quite funny. Like listening to their accents, like the Australian and English yeah, guy, right, right, just laughing about it. Like you know, your pecker, you gotta, you gotta I tick mean, on your pecker. And this is great for the show, right? This is the stuff they want to happen. Yeah. Like the the squirmy kind of accidents. They don't want you to go out there and be like one with the wind. No, like they, they don't. They want, they want you to this struggle. to be, yes. They want exactly. you to be afraid while yeah. being naked. Right, right. He didn't seem too afraid here. He's, he's, he's even amused. Yeah, that. right. Calm and collected. Okay, hit us with your Today in History, Charlie Neff. Ooh, there's a lot going on today. So today in 1934, Bonnie and Clyde, the famous bank robbers, were killed in a stolen Ford Deluxe near... Bienville Parish in Louisiana. I never knew they were real people. Yeah. I what, thought it was just a TV of... show or something. Oh, no. Actually, our cats, you know how we got two new Persian cats? Yeah. They're rescues. Just want to point out. Please adopt. Don't shop. You got two new cats? I thought you already had two. No, no. The same two. The same two. Okay, okay. So we have three now. Oh. Pret- Pretzel. He's our, like, OG. And then we have two new cats. They're Bonnie and Clyde. No way. Yeah, but we kind of, you know, the names are all over the place. Okay. I feel like you name your pet one thing, and then it turns into, like, oh, you know, you start getting all these other names for them. These pet names for them. Pet names. So Bonnie, we call her Bobo. Right. We call her Bonnie Bowser. Like, she has, like, a bunch of names. Right. Okay. Anyways, next, next one. moving on. 1995, ABC's Full House ended. Okay. Legendary TV show. Um, in 2005, this is a good one. Tom Cruise famously jumped around on Oprah's couch, proclaiming his love for Katie Holmes. I think I remember, remember that one. Remember when he did that? Yes. He was like so oh, in yes. love with Katie Holmes, and he jumped on the couch and he's like, "I love Katie Holmes." That was the moment we knew he was crazy. Yeah, right. <laughs> like I think that was right. The, the full Scientology right. crazy. I don't know if I should say that right. poor Scientology. <laughs> um, and then lastly, in 2007, Jordan Sparks won American Idol season, season six. Ah, oh, it's been that long. I know. Can you believe that? I know. 2007. Those were good years. They right were. There. She's actually rumored to be one of the new Katy Perry replacements. No way. Yeah. I could see that happening. She's putting her hand up, um, like saying, pick me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you think they're going to go with Jelly Roll, though? Because that's also the rumor, right? It'll be Jelly Roll. John Bon Jovi's in the mix. Oh, Megan okay. Trainor's in the mix. Wow. Wow. What about Charlie Cotton? Are you in the mix? I'm in the mix. <laughs> Call me. Call me Simon Cow. Oh, no. Or Ryan Seacrest or whoever. Yeah. I don't think Simon's on. It anymore. No, he's not. <laughs> okay, Charlie. Thank okay, you. Charlie. Thank, thank you. And um, we'll see you guys here tomorrow. Goodbye. Bye.